Hey guys, so in a pretty strange twist of fate, like I've always said the people in Magic the Gathering are far more interesting than anywhere else. Or, and one of the more interesting characters that we haven't talked about for a while uh, that we are going to talk about is the Quarterling. The Quarterling used to be a Magic the Gathering channel and or I guess that was his new channel and Unsleeved Media was the MTG headquarters was the Magic the Gathering channel and a lot of people on the social justice side who are left leaning really really despise him. Now I don't think Jeremy is a bad guy. I do think that you know, he was put in a very bad situation by Gavin Vehe when the when one of the workers, one of the more notable workers at Wizard of the Coast, says that you're garbage on Reddit and encourages people to harass you. I think that's what happened to Jeremy. That's why he became the on sleeve media that you know of him today. So the Christine Sprankles issue was a totally separate issue, but it kind of blends in. And of course, Kotaku talked about it, and there was a really appealing article for Kotaku. Oh, you have a white cis male, and he is harassing a female in a nerd game. You cannot see where this is going. This is a very, you know, very um, stereotypical article that will get lots and lots of views which it did and then they got the quarterling on jeremy banned for life which of course he's still banned for life now let's talk about um this situation which is very fascinating you have a person who makes board games for a living and he essentially for security and safety reasons Particularly on behalf of my friends and followers, I am blocking every account that follows account below the quarterling and insta-blocking any accounts that tags them unwanted in mentions. The account is a source of rabbit harassment and dogpiling. So when Eric attempted to do this, not only did he lose all of his followers, he also got banned and suspended from Twitter. Which now he's unbanned, of course, because Kotaku wrote an article. So if I had, I've had a very similar experience with a young lady in up north, and you know I just uh, retweeted verbatim uh, a joke. I re, I posted on LinkedIn a joke verbatim that I found from a joke book that Gary Vanderchuk, one of the more famous, most famous marketers in my industry. He's the one that I was retweet or re-linking re or whatever. He was the, I mean, the joke was from like 2005, but he was the one who was talking about it in his private Facebook group or his private LinkedIn group. So I thought, oh, hey, Gary Randichuk, that's pretty interesting. Let me post it. And then, of course, a social media justice warrior went and attacked me and got everyone to attack me and you know how it went. So I've had a similar experience to what Unsleeve Media the quartering experiences. Uh, and I've even linked it to Unsleeve Media. So I've actually actually told him about it. It's crazy what people are willing to do for clout. Um, so when you are attacking and you're saying, so if you are going to block people who follow the quartering, then why announce it? Why announce and get the 500 likes? Why do that? Unless you wanted people to attack the quarterling because you called him uh, by the name, the vile, and this um, young lady called me by my name all the time. And it was like, if you're going to attack the substance, which is, is this joke appropriate? then why are you using my name and my company all the time? And the same with Eric. Why is he using the quarterling all the time? And whenever he says, oh, I'm not going to mention this person's name, then people are just going to Google it. And Kotaku has the name. You know, how many times do you need? Let me pull up the uh, Kotaku article. Um, and it's just fascinating because just like Eric Yang was banned, the individual that was harassing me 
got banned off Facebook and Instagram. So Yang, designer of stuff like Blood Raids and Star Wars and Game of Thrones card games, has worked on ev from with everyone from Fantasy Flight to Come On. If you ask more board, uh, ask most board game fans to name the most popular and prominent designers in the business, Yang's name will appear on top of the list. Yang has been using his Facebook and Twitter presence to speak up about social issues, including his own experiences as a black man facing police harassment. He was also one of the most prominent names distancing themselves early from the board gaming industry's group's refusal to support Black Lives Matter. Recently, Yang has, says he has become the target of thousands of basement-dwelling reactionary blank blank, which he believes are fans of a scumbag serial harasser. That would be on Sleeve Media. Or the quarter, I don't know, there's too many names. I would just call him Jeremy. And that's crazy. Hey Twitter, give Eric back his Twitter account. Twitter as in common, as is common in these situations has nothing to talk about his, uh, so basically, they're dogpiling on on sleeve media again. Anytime they have the opportunity, they're going to go ahead and do that. I don't have no idea how Jeremy, who's a really reasonable human being, I've actually met him uh, in person. Um, he's the only content creator I've met in person for Magic the Gathering. He's a pretty reasonable human being, and we went to IHOP, and he paid he paid for my meal in IHOP, and I gave him some boxes early. Uh, that's when I had get my. That's when I like, getting a booster box early. This was born of the gods. I remember because I kept some boxes for myself. Um, so I got them a day or two earlier than I should have had. But yeah, um, he's a pretty reasonable guy. He's a pretty nice guy. I mean, I thought he was um, interesting. And I didn't think he was threatening or a predator. Uh, I thought he was just a good guy who liked uh, geeky stuff. And for him to be like ref framed as like the, the villain of uh, Aldner, not just Magic the Gathering, he's still the villain of Magic the Gathering. Let me read you these comments below. Um, it's so weird that like Jeremy is the ire. I mean, let me read you this com the first comment. I won't name him, but one of the people leading the harassment campaign was banned a few years ago from Magic the Gathering after, among other things, targeting a prominent cosplayer and causing her to leave the community. She has since returned to much rejoicing. That's the guy. Uh, and that is Luke Plunkett, who um, wrote the article for Kotaku. He's a Kotaku article writer. So essentially, Kotaku has painted Jeremy, who I think is a reasonable human being. Maybe some of his views are a little out there. And definitely, he could have been nicer. He could have been a lot nicer, um, I think. But that's like not really... I mean... Does he have to be nicer? Not really. Would it have been nice for him to be more courteous to Christine Sprankles? Probably. And maybe he regrets not being as nice as he could to Sprankles right now. But, you know, Sprankles is fine. She's back in cosplaying. So, Eric, who is, like, I thought he was a nobody based on his Twitter following because, honestly, he doesn't have any right now. But maybe he unfollow like i get i'm guessing what happened was he he banned everybody <laughs> um there's no way he only has 200 twitter followers right as i just showed you but they suspended his account for a little bit of time which is not great i mean let's be honest here this guy was an idiot eric was an idiot and he's a very famous idiot i mean maybe you play board games and you know who this guy is i i'm actually buying a lot of board games right now as you speak which i'll probably just put in the community tab but somehow jeremy became like everything that was wrong with magic the gathering and i don't agree with that i met him i've talked to him he's a nice guy and he's been painted like this um evil overlord that is destroying the, I, it's I don't, the more I think about it, the weirder like this whole thing get, gets. Like, why Jeremy? Why Jeremy? Why why is he the the villain of Magic: The Gathering? I can think of a lot of villains, like Noah Bradley, who actually 
physically and mentally destroy people's lives. Absolutely destroys their lives. And Jeremy is just this random dude who wants to play a game of magic, and now he's being punched in the face at every convention. I mean, it, it actually literally is dangerous for him to go anywhere. Because look at this guy. I mean, and, and this guy has followers. Um, he's not a nobody. He's a somebody in the board game industry. And he does when he's telling people, I go after Jeremy, they'll go after him. Um, and I do think that there is a level of grace that Jeremy can show to these individuals and therefore become less of a um, evil character, if you will, in this game of ours. Uh, but at the same time, I, I understand why he would not want to do that and why that he has this kind of mentality. But yeah, Eric is, I mean, when I did my research on him, he's legit. I mean, this is a famous guy in the nerd industry who obviously has Kotaku's Kotaku's guys back, and he really, really hates Jeremy. I don't know. Like just a few years ago, we were all make Jeremy was opening some magic packs. He was happy. Everyone was happy, and then suddenly we get to like this weird scenario where uh, it's it's just so weird. Not even on like a um general level on even a personal level to me that hey let's pick a victim let's pick a villain and that villain will be uh, against the nerd culture and that villain would be jeremy not you know a predator or something like that i mean there are a lot of predators out there so i'm sure that we could pick any of them right just name they just name one but guys <laughs> 